Bang! Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily cryptocurrency and blockchain aggregated news on YouTube. Look, look, gonna be drinking. Look, look, smoking. Look, look, swearing. Look, look, you've been warned. Look, look, here I come. Look, look, bang! Welcome, everyone. My name is Shamar Clark. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, the greatest show on earth, the greatest show in the multiverse. Bang! Yes! Yes, yes, we got a great one for you today, brothers. All right, holy, I'm hyped, I'm hyped. Man, we're having a good time right now. Yes, yes. Oh, you saw that shit. We got to talk. Let's talk a little bit. Yo, you saw how that shit went down in Saudi Arabia, huh? What? They took out half of Saudi Arabia's oil capacity. Holy shit. <laughs> the markets are moving nicely. If you're a trader out there, I hope you're making this money. Bye. Look. All right, let's get to the crypto. I order. Oh, okay. So this is the story I was going to tell you guys last week. But then we got, you know, there was too many other, you know, better stuff. So I, I postponed it. I did promise to do it. So, yeah, Schmar keeps his promise. Bye. Always on duty. So we're going to talk about this guy. Because, you know, I really don't. All right. I'll just tell you the story. Then we'll talk when we get there. Iota recruits a renowned researcher. Oh, yeah. Renowned. The reason you're watching me right now is because of this guy. TCPIP. This guy invented it. Yes. Look, look. So we're going to talk about it. Or he was part of the team that invented it. And then we're going to go to Deutsche Bank joins JP Morgan crypto blockchain. What? And so uh, so the reason I'm bringing this one up is I knew JP Morgan was coming out with that JPM coin thing or JP coin, whatever the hell it's called. Yo, they, they, they've signed up banks to this shit. <laughs> like, it's real. And so, oh, little whipper lovers. Oh, little whipper lovers. Where's your banks, whipper lovers? Look, look, who's using X Rapid Ripple lovers? Well, I'll tell you who's using JP Morgan coin. Bang! Deutsche Bank and 200 and something other banks. Dang on. And so that's why I'm bringing it up. Because I was just, I didn't know JP Morgan had a network. We did read about it, but I didn't, no one had talked about it growing. So I never heard anything. So I was like, eh, whatever. But it's real. And then finally, bang! OKX Korea delists five cryptos. Now, I don't really give a shit about listings and delistings. Oh, this coin is listed here. This coin is listed there. That's another story that I don't do. So all these stories today are stories that I don't do. I don't do when some new guy goes and works at some place, but this one's special. And I don't do, well, stuff that doesn't pertain to our money, but the J.P. Morgan thing, like, dang on. They have all these banks. Oh, little whip of lovers. So look, I'm going to talk about that. And then I don't usually do listings and delistings, but why? Why am I doing the OKX delisting thing? Because bang, it's incur it's 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 because of the fat F rules. Fat F rules. So we're gonna talk about fat F rules. And we're gonna see you see if it's if it's affecting Korea this way, bang, maybe it'll affect other countries in the same way or something like that. So these are all stories that I normally do not do, but they all have a special twist, which uh which is why we're gonna do them. So Bye. Look, look. Yes. Let's move on with our day, brothers. Let's do it how we normally do it. Bye. Yes. Let's do a refresh. Bye. Yes. All right. What we got here? Bitcoin at $10,255, brothers. When I left you on Saturday, it was 10327 So, whatever, man. Let's uh, 100 and change. What is that? Down. All right. Look. All right, top 10, when is the day? Or uh, top 10, mark cap of the day. Top 10 of the day, brothers. Mark cap. Look, look. Usual suspects, brothers. Yeah, you know how it goes around these parts. <laughs> it's like a, just repeating myself every day with this part. All right, top 10 of the day, brothers. Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Tether, EOS, Binance Coin, Bitcoin SV, and Monero. Bang, taking it all, holding on the number 10. Yes. Actually, the number 10 is what lets me change it once in a while. <laughs> Other than that. It is just these same motherfuckers. Look, look. Uh, market moves today, brothers. Single digits up, single digits down. <laughs> yeah. Single digits up, single digits down. Single digits up, single digits down. Single this up, single this down. Two. Single this up, two. Single this down, all right.
top 10 losers of the day, brothers. You see anything on here you like, you go get it because it is on sale. Bye. Yes. Look, top 10 losers of the day, brothers. Qcoin shares, Zilliqa, Cosmos, Bitcoin Diamond, Algorand, Monocoin, Hypercash, Redcoin, Zcoin, and Chainlink. Let's see who made money today, brothers. Bang, top 10 winners of the day. ABBC Coin, Synthetics Network, VeChain, Metaverse CTP, Dragon Coins, Kyber Network, ZB, Tron, Ethereum, and Basic Attention. All right, let's look at the total market cap of the day, brothers. What was that? 266.1? Hmm. All right. 266.1 billion. He's told my cap of the day. And when I left you on Saturday, it was at 263.7. So we went up. Uh, $3 billion. <laughs> Let's call it $3 billion. My math is all messed up. Look. And total volume of the day, brothers, is 54.0. And when I left you on Saturday, it was 45.5. So we've gone up $4.5 well, billion dollars on today. All right. All right. But, yeah, let's check this out. Boom. So I did, you know, I, like I said, these stories today are stories that I never usually do. Like, literally, I choose not to do these type of stories but because this guy is such a super mega dude and i did promise i was going to read it last week so i'm like all right all right all right let's read it <laughs> no let's read it uh uh iota research council recruits renowned researcher john crowcroft now this guy's a badass IOR has been one of the quietest ecosystems in the market over 2019. Well, unless you're reading all the onboardings. I don't know what you're talking about there, buddy. <laughs> in fact, maybe not so many tweets, more onboardings. Uh, that helps. Uh, in fact, IOTA was last in the news after it announced its collaboration with Hackster for a user-driven contest four weeks ago. It is in the news again after the IOTA Foundation announced that John Crowcroft, this is the guy, Crowcroft, would be joining the IOTA Research Council. So blah, 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 we're, we're glad to the, the, the distinguished guy, John Crowcroft, is part of our council. A fellow of the Royal Society and one of the more internationally renowned researchers in the field of distributed computing. So I'm going to tell you about this. this guy. He was doing distributed computing way back in the 80s. So the reason you even get to watch this show is because of a little protocol called TCP IP. I used to be a network administrator. I'm actually Microsoft certified. I have my MCSE. And TCP, I got mine under Windows NT. Some of you probably weren't even born with Windows NT when I was certified under that. But, um, yeah, Google Windows NT. Mm. <laughs> Shit. Yes. And so uh, that's when TCP IP came out. And so TCP IP is the reason you get to see me right now. That's TCP, Transmission Control Protocol, IP, uh, Internet Protocol. Um, and this guy helped build it. He helped build the protocol called TCP IP, which allows you to view me right this very second. Without TCP IP, well, back in the days, I used to have to use a thing called a modem, and I'd have to call a server if I wanted to access the data inside. Yeah, so if the data was in some server in Australia, I had to call it. Yeah, so back in those days, we used to hack the phone companies and get free long-distance calling. <laughs> look, look, tell it on yourself. Look, it's phone freaking. All right, so that's how badass this guy is, though. Crowcroft is also on several advisory boards, including the Max Planck Institute for Software Systems. That's what I'm telling you. This guy, like, from the beginnings, you know, he's been from the beginnings, and that's why he's so special, and that's why I'm talking about him. So this is some, uh, what do we got here, a tweet or something here? Um, oh, it's a blog post. The blog post read, John work, John's work on open distributed system is perfectly aligned with the IOTA Foundation's effort to develop IOTA as the backbone of the IOT, Internet of Things. His research interests include scalable multicast routing, practical approaches to traffic management, and the design of deployable end-to-end -end protocols, TCP IP. All topics which made him an ideal advisor for IOTA. He also deeply believes in preserving privacy in digital spaces. 
So on joining the IOTA Research Council, Crowcroft had this to say. So this is the guy himself talking now. He says, I've been working on decentralized systems since 1981. Bye. <laughs> Before you punks for even more. <laughs> I have no intention of stopping now. Look, he said, IOTA holds a great potential to fulfill a key role in the emerging IOT Internet of Things space. Bang. You dag on right. That tangle is the best thing ever. Ultimately scalable. Bang. Quantum proof. Bang. Unlimited transactions. Bang. Yes. Yes. Like I always say around here, makes your makes the blockchain look like your mama's old computer. So we're witnessing the confluence of several areas of distributed system research into the emerging real-world applications that are precisely the focus of the IOTA Foundation. Yes. It is my pleasure to serve in an advisory position for the organization. Now, Crowcroft is also the Marconi Professor of Communication Systems in the Computer Laboratory of the University of Cambridge and the Chair of Program Committee at the Alan Turing Institute. Turing Institute. Oh, Turing. You know who Alan Turing is, right? He's the guy who broke the Enigma code during World War II. You know that we were we used to listen into the, the Nazis back then because of that guy, Alan Turing. Yes, he was a homosexual. And back in those days, if you were a homosexual, you used to go to jail back in uh, England. So he broke the he broke the code of the, the Nazi code. It was called Enigma. He broke the Enigma code, then got sent to jail for being a homosexual. Anyways, though, he's a great national hero of the, the UK. Bye. We'd all be speaking German now. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I probably wouldn't be speaking fuck all. I'd probably be in some chains and enslaved somewhere. <laughs> Getting my ass beat. <laughs> Picking some cotton. So look, thank you, Alvin Turin. Bang. Now, a more streamlined look at John Crawford and his accomplishments can be found at. So if you guys want to look at this guy, here's his Wikipedia page right here. Give it a bang. You guys know that I put the links for all the stories that I write in the uh, descriptions of each video, right? And this is his cyber home, all right. But this guy is a badass. He is what, this is why you can see me right now. TCP IP, tra Transmission Control Protocol, IP, uh, Internet Protocol, okay? He was part of the team that built it. And so, you know, if anyone knows about decentralization and getting data around and stuff like that, it's this guy. And that's what was so Amazing. You know, I don't do the stories about, well, this CEO went to this company or this COO went to, I don't give a fuck. But this guy, he's, you know, one of the inventors basically of the internet. <laughs> the reason we have this thing called the internet because of this guy. Right? Bang! You understand? So, bang, Iota. Man, I'm waiting to see what they, what, what more they do. All right. Boom. Germany's largest bank joins JP Morgan's blockchain network now. Dang on. I did not. I mean, we. I, I. I mean, I knew about the network. We read about it. The IIS thing. I think it's called or something. Um. It, well, we heard that they wanted to do it, but you know, they never talked about they're signing up this person, that person, that person. Pfft, they have over two hundred and something banks on it now. Yeah. Yeah. J.P. Morgan, baby. J.P. Morgan's rocking and rolling in. So, obviously, Germany's largest bank. Who's that? Bang! Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank is part of J.P. Morgan's new blockchain network. Man. No. I didn't know J.P. Morgan rocked it so hard. So, watch this. Hold on. Let me get a sip, and let's check this thing out. They've been doing it all sneaky and quiet right back there, right? Remember last year when we were reading? Remember Q1, Q2? Jamie Dimon being all, all, you know, crypto crap, you know, crypto is all bullshit and blah, blah. This mother, I told you, watch out. Watch out for how these, these CEOs talk. Bullshitters, bullshitters. Why did he say Bitcoin was a Ponzi scheme? Oh, and then he comes out with his own crypto. Now he's got his own banking network. Well, little ripple numbers. But look, seriously, though. And I told you about J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan's like Citibank. They do clearing and stuff for other banks, right? Like other banks are clients of J.P. Morgan's. Other banks are clients of Citibank, right? 
I don't remember the name of it. They're like a something something hub. You know what I mean? So, like, say if you have if you're if you like you're in America, if you're banking with I don't know Southwestern Bank, you know, just some shitty little bank, you know. Yeah, well, that bank uses J.P. Morgan and that, and Citibank to to send its money and stuff like that, right? They're clients of them. Anyways, and so I guess what I'm saying is, you know, so J.P. Morgan just, I guess, lined up all their clients. I mean, I didn't hear about any of this or else, I mean, I would have talked about it. All right, but let's listen, let's listen, watch this. Germany's largest bank, Deutsche Bank, has joined J.P. Morgan's blockchain-based network, the Interbank Information Network, I-I-N, bang. Launched as a pilot in 2017, the J.P. Morgan Blockchain Initiative now has a network of all oh, 320 banks that have entered the platform to swap global payment data using the... E oh, and this is the... Exactly. This is the... That's why I brought it up. That's right. It's not Deutsche Bank, but what? Bye! The Ethereum network. Dudes, we've been reading it since Q1 this year. All the different major projects being run over Ethereum now, right? Right? And this is what I'm talking about. You guys know I've said it 100 times. I'm not going to bore you. But I think the battle of the blockchain is going to be any of these platforms that where you can make distributed apps on and stuff, who's got the biggest names on them? Ethereum's cleaning up. VeChain's cleaning up too. Deloitte is on VeChain and Ethereum. Deloitte has one of their project, one one thing going on Ethereum and on VeChain. Like, yes, the financial report time is something. All right, let's move on. So, uh, so what I wanted to say is, though, just that, you know, Ethereum, man, this year, we've read some big ass stuff going on on it, right? Um, projects being developed and deployed into the real world all over the Ethereum network. Um, Takis Gorgakopoulos, head of payments at JP Morgan, expressed hope that Deutsche Bank will be the first of several other large banks to join IIN. According to the report, Deutsche Bank is the world's biggest clearer of Euro-denominated payments. So they must be sort of what JP Morgan and Citibank are for America. It sounds like that's what they are for Europe. Smaller banks use them to, you know, brrr, you know, do the clearing and stuff. Um, IIN will enable Deutsche Bank to offer better client services, according to the bank's global head of cash management, Ole Matheson. Matheson, who occupied the position in March 2019, explained that the bank expects IIN to reduce the cost of processing difficult payments. All right. And so 400 member target by year's end. The IIN network is based on the J.B. Morgan developed Quorum platform and intends to tackle the major challenges of sharing information between banks and speed up transaction to recipients. Quorum is based on the Ethereum blockchain, which was recently reported by co-founder Vitalik Buterin to be almost full as it is the most popular public blockchain network for decentralized apps. So, I mean, if it's almost full, I mean, uh, what are these guys talking about? What are they talking about doing here? Anyways, according to, obviously, J.P. Morgan's done their research, so they know better. According to George Jacopoulos, J.P. Morgan aims to reach 400 agreements with banks by the end of 2014, and is also expected to announce other large banks in the near future. Bye! Look, look! Now, little ripple lovers. I thought you were supposed to be the world banking thing, ripple lovers. No banks using XRP yet. X Rapid yet. Never. But seriously, though, bang, man. Fucking, what, 300 and something banks already? I didn't even hear about any of these. <laughs> right? We heard about, yeah, we're going to do this. But they didn't brag about them signing up, folks. That's why I'm saying. All this money, all this uh, banking stuff with the crypto and remittance stuff, just fuck all that. Fuck all that. The banks and stuff are just going to keep this in-house. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're not going to let no little green-haired, nose-ring crypto guy come in to make any money off of that.
Why am I going to pay you for transactions? I'll just build my own crypto and make my own transaction money. Look, I supported in June. JP Morgan is expected to pilot its own cryptocurrency, JPM coin, by the end of 2019. Recently, JP Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon supported the much discussed crypto project, Libra, claiming that the stable coin does not pose a threat to banks in the short term. Meanwhile, Deutsche Bank is one of the 26 global central banks that will meet with Libra founders to discuss its purported financial stability risk tomorrow in Switzerland. Oh, yeah. Is that today or tomorrow? Oh, so so today. Today it's 3.54 a.m. Hold on. Let me look at my. Today it's 3.54 a.m. September 17th, 2019. Bye. Look. Yes. You guys want to see something? Hold on. I'll show you in a minute. And, uh, and, um, yeah, so today is when the Libra, the, uh, the 26 big banks and central bankers and all that are going to talk to Libra people. And the Libra people are basically saying, uh, go fuck yourselves. <laughs> we don't care about your, your concerns about us. France and Germany said they're going to try to stop Libra from getting accepted in uh, Europe. Uh, you know, here, Maxine Waters, she's the House committee lady. She hates, well, she just hates Facebook in general. So she really hates Libra. <laughs> <laughs> yo man and the libra guys what's his name what's his name marvin or something he's the he's the the ceo of calibra which is the the thing that holds libra that the company that runs libra he's basically like yeah just go fuck yourselves we're gonna release this shit he said by the end of next year and so which is good which is good because hopefully uh, we'll get our crypto regulations by then because they'll be afraid of the libra thing but Anyway, tomorrow is the big, uh, big Libra meeting. All right, whatever. But, but uh, what were we talking about here, though? But, bang, yeah, Deutsche Bank, man, joins up with, uh, well, on the, yeah, on the J.P. Morgan crypto blockchain quorum, which this is the reason I brought up because it's cryptoy on the Ethereum network. Yeah, man, on the Ethereum network. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. We will see how that goes. And then finally, bang. There it is. Gave me the delayed. Bang. Look. OKX Crypto to delist five privacy coins due to what? FATF's travel rule. So we read about FATF, right? And we read about that travel rule thing. Um, remember, it was that thing that it, the, 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 the exchanges have to know who is sending money to who. It's not just, um, if you can't tell who is sending the money to who, they're not going to allow it. They're not going to allow it. And so Korea are delisting Dash, SBTC, XMR, what's that, Monero, ZEC, and Zen, um, like soon, in a couple of weeks or something like this. But due to the FATF compliance, to being FATF compliant, like I told you guys, FATF compliant is serious. All of these, you know, you always hear bullshit about the United Nations and IMF and all these bullshit, you know, international organizations. No one listens to that crap, <laughs> right? They're just a bunch of rich guys talking a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, FATF, though, is the real deal. Everyone's becoming FATF compliant. Russia is even becoming FATF compliant. Fucking Iran. Is becoming fat f compliant like that's the level like it's serious it's serious <laughs> and iran's under sanctions but they're still becoming fat f compliant so one day when they're not under sanctions they'll be good to go that's how the level of it okay fat f uh if you're new around here is the financial action task force it's a it's a it's a you know it's kind of like a international organization not kind of it's an international organization that writes best standards and best practices to counter uh, money laundering and terrorist financing, okay? And so they have the best practices and they give the best, rec well, they give the recommendations. And so all the governments, not all the governments around the world, but many, many of them, they're becoming fat F compliant and making their whole banking and trading and all that, all their financial guys, be fat f compliant as well 
In fact, I think the European Union, I think their rules are even harder than FATF, if I remember correctly from something I read last week or so. Right? All right, so let's check it out. One second. All right. Recently, there's been so much pressure on the regulation of the private coins. Oh, on the regulation oh, of private coins. All right. Cryptocurrency exchanges have been receiving a lot of pressure to delist these coins. Wait, am I did I miss something here? No. All right, that's how you want to start it. All right. Cryptocurrency uh, exchanges have been receiving a lot of pressure to delist coins and block users from ac accessing them. Oki OKX Exchange, a South Korean cryptocurrency exchange, announced on Monday that is stopping the trading of Dash, Horizon, Monero, Zcash, and Super Bitcoin from October 10th. So if you own any of those and they're on OKX, well, get them off. Um, these privacy coins give, not gave, they are still around, give users extra privacy features. Their withdrawal services will be halted on December 10th, according to OKX. All right. So violations of the FATF rules. Um, the exchange said that the decision has been arrived at after these coins were found to go against the FATF Financial Action Task Force rule, commonly known as the travel rule. Uh, FATF in June laid out watchdog guidelines in crypto on the travel rule. So these are only guidelines, but every country is doing it. So just like every other in, in institution gives guidelines and no one listens to them, yeah, yeah, they're giving guidelines and they're making their people listen to them. So the regulation required exchanges to transfer and also collect information, client information during transactions. Remember we read about to, uh, we read about that one company that's going to allow exchanges to be FATF compliant by sending the user information along with each transaction, right? Uh, anonymous or not anonymously, but just privately. All right. Um, so this information should include the originator's name, his or her location information, and his or her account number. The account name and account number of the beneficiary should also be communicated. And remember that company said, yeah, we'll, we'll transfer that at the time of the transaction, right? What the fuck was the name of that shit? Right? Hold on a second, guys. Oh, it doesn't I didn't write down the name. All right. I just wrote down FATF compliance will be easier. All right, but anyways, and that's what they want that was that what one, that one company wants to do, right? So if you use that one company's services, you should be FATF compliant because you're sending the account name, number, and blah blah blah, all the information that they want, right? Um OKX Korea said that these private coins did not allow such information to be obtained. Um, that is the main reason. That's the main reason why the exchange decided to delist these coins. That's the power of FATF. All these exchanges around the world got to get compliant. So, and but and also, so I guess what I'm also telling you is, if you're a holder of any of this, if you're a holder of any of this, um, be prepared that. The possibilities that um, your shit might get delisted, you know, worldwide or, or just wherever, like, you know, whatever country. So just be, I'm just saying be prepared because everyone's getting FATF compliant. And I mean, this is only South Korea. And I'm going to read something else. I'm going to show you guys this. Bang. It's actually another article, but it ties into this article. And so I'm going to turn this into one big story, but it's actually two different articles I'm going to read to you. And so, I mean, that's all I'm saying. If you want to, uh, you know, uh, just protect yourselves, right? Like, know that 
that might happen. All right, there we go. Um, so, um, where were we? All right. OKX Korea said that these private coins did not allow such... All right, we read that. That is the main reason why the exchange decided to delist these coins, because they don't allow uh, the information to be obtained. They don't allow the information to be obtained, so that's why they they've decided to delist these coins. The crypto transaction rules requires businesses to have information about the parties involved in a trade of over $1,000. That's how small it's going to be. Um, OKX spokesperson also said that the decision affects only the Korea unit of crypto exchanges and not globally. So you see what I'm saying? Well, I'm not saying anything I'm about to say. So let me tell you something. Is, <laughs> I guess that's how I should say it. So they're rocking this in, in Korea only. And now let me show you this. Bang. The OKX, so this is a different article, but it's the same story. And actually, let me bang this up here. With more domestic exchanges said to follow suit, experts have warned of a South Korean coin clearout. Look, they're obviously just exaggerating. Settle down. But all those ones that we read, they might get cleared out. And so let me just read this. The OKX uh, Korea announcement comes hot on the heels of a statement that Huobi Korea, which last week stated that was bringing in a delisting policy, falling in line with domestic market leaders Upbit, Bitham, CoinOne, and Corbit, all of whom have recently announced new delisting protocols. So I'm just showing you that you see the FATF thing, and I guess Korea is, South Korea is uh, enforcing it hard because as you can see, all these South Korean exchanges, Flip and Huobi, Upbit, Bithom, blah, 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 and Corbit, Coin One and Corbit, are all, all now have what, all now have made delisting protocols, actual rules for when we will not put something on our platform, okay? Right? So that's the power of Fat App. And so just keep that in mind when investing, Fat App. You know? Um, OKX Korea has already delisted some 16 tokens this year, terminating support for tokens including AirSwap and Digibyte back in February after internal audits per a Newsway report. The OK Group also spoke to Crypto News about, all right, that's a bunch of bullshit. So, but you see, it's others. So I just wanted to show you that all the exchanges in, in Korea are getting hardcore with the fat F thing. And so what I want to show you about that is, all right, we're hearing about this first here in South Korea. Well, not here. I mean, I live in South Beach, but over in South Korea. But don't expect, well, let me put it this way. Um, don't be surprised if these same things happen in your country. All right. Holy shit. I couldn't think of what to say there. Well, I knew what I wanted to say, but I couldn't think of how to say it. And so that's why I like to bring up these stories sometimes just to show what's the possibility of what, what could happen in the future. You know what I mean? Like, and just for you to prepare and, you know, invest accordingly. You know what I'm saying? And prepare accordingly. You know? All right. You know what I'm saying, brothers? You know? You're my subscribers, man. I got to keep you safe, motherfuckers. Look, look. Got to have you at the Noah Fest party one day. <laughs> got to make you some money. Look. So that's what we do around here. Keep you a little bit safe, you know? All right. Um... You know, plus, we don't want these bastards fucking with my boys. Look. Fuck with my subscribers. Look. All right. Um, so, OKX spokesperson also said that this decision affects only the Korea unit of crypto exchanges and not globally. And so that's what shows you, right? Well, if they're only doing it on their South Korea one, South Korea is, is regulating hard, right? But <laughs> hopefully the rest won't be so rough. All right. It clearly shows that the Korean government asked the country's exchanges to implement the new rules by FATA. Absolutely. That's what I just told you. Um, other exchanges to follow suit. It is categorical that more exchange platforms are also going to halt the trading of privacy coins. It is estimated that over 200 countries are going to implement these rules by the end of June 2020. Now, did you hear what that just said? If you own, so if you own any of this, if you own any of this, Remember this, uh, FATF is going to be implemented by over 
200 countries on earth. The whole world is doing it. Like, this ain't no, like I said, this ain't the IMF and the United Nations, motherfucker. This is the real deal. And, compliment, com and countries are enforcing it. Even the Iranians are doing it. Like, that's how hardcore, okay? Um, and that will be by, so 200 countries, so just assume that your country is part of this. And by the end of June 2020. Now, does that mean that those coins that we looked at above are going to be delisted in your country? Not necessarily, right? Depending on how, how, how hardcore your country decides to, to go with FATF. But um, just be aware. That's all I'm saying, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, cats and dogs. Just be aware, okay? All right. So look. Um, this is going to happen according to many source, sources, even though it does not seem practical for numerous decentralized blockchain. <laughs> exactly. They don't give a shit about the blockchains. Fuck your blockchain, buddy. Fat F compliant or fuck yourself. And that's what I want you to understand. Like, Fat F, it's real. These governments are really doing it. Like, they're, we've read about it a few times here. They're really doing it. So, just think about that when you're investing. They're not going to care and, ow. You know, uh, like we read about that other guy the other day when he said not. Nah, these cryptos have to, well, and what the SEC is doing and what that other guy, you know, these, these cryptos have to abide by our rules, not us change for them, right? And so, yeah, those privacy ones there, you know, let's go back up and just look at them. These ones here, just remember that this is going to be in 200 countries. And I mean, these guys right here, <laughs> they have the crosshairs on them. You know what I'm saying? Just saying, just saying, if you own any, you know, just be ready to find a way to, I don't know, man, cash in somehow. So look, hmm. well, don't look yet. Hold on. Let me get a sip. Oh, yeah, man. Fat F is real. All right. So lastly, in transactions involving these five delisted cryptocurrencies, we're down at the bottom. The exchanges are not yet are not able to determine the recipient or the sender of the coins. So and, and that's what I'm telling you, like. It doesn't look like these coins are going to be fat of compliant at all. And so being able to use them and hold them and all that, eesh, eesh, all right? Just telling you. And I'm telling you, all the countries are becoming fat of compliant, so we just read it, 200 countries. All right, 200. We're going to implement these rules by the end of June 2020. It's a big deal. This is the new transformation of our financial system on a global basis. <laughs> All right? It ain't no recommendation. Well, it's a recommendation, but they're using, they're doing it. All right, so look. Uh, an OKX representative, however, stated that the halt would only affect OKX in Korea. The coins will still be available on the entire OKX platform for now. Bye. All right. So I just kind of really wanted to bring up the fat F thing and show you the seriousness of it. And also as my subscribers, I want to show you if you own any of these, start thinking about that fat F thing uh, and how it's going to affect your hodlings. All right. Bye. Yes. All right, what we got here? Let's do some shout outs. Bam, what are you talking about? First of all, Bam, love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang. Yes. All right, what's he talking about? 20% of affluent UK millennials have invested in crypto, with the figure rising to as high as 29% among those with more disposable assets. Great. Makes sense. Bang, you got some money to invest. Exactly. Choose an asset class and go for it. This is the best asset class. Look, it's the most riskiest. But look, if you know anything, bang, you can see a tsunami coming. And believe me, you're going to get paid off out of this crypto stuff more than you're going to get paid out of anything else, baby. Look, my Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum holdings are up 300% on the year. <laughs> and this is garbage time. 
So look, good job, millennials in the UK. Smart little pants. Smarty pants is, all right. DNA followed me. Who's DNA? DNA, built on three core blockchain pillars. Security, scalability, and interoperability. The dual chain network architecture. DNA, that by MSV or yes. Bang, all right, see you, buddy. Whoop, what's Benim talking about right here? Yeah, this motherfucking thing. Right? Might have to talk about this tomorrow. Everyone's talking about this hash graph thing. Is it that badass or what? So, CB Newswire, just in. Hashgraph has launched its long-awaited public network, backed by major corporations and promising faster transactions than any blockchain. Mm, we might have to talk about that tomorrow. Everyone's talking about this Hashgraph thing, man. I didn't know it was backed by major corporations. All right, all right. Yeah, if I had known that, <laughs> that would have probably been one of the stories tonight. The hook! We're going to get to it tomorrow, though. I'm going to look deep into that. Everyone's talking about that lately. I didn't know it was I didn't know it was a whole big I didn't know major corporations were involved. I just thought it was a bunch of, you know, internet hype, you know, the usual bullshit. All right then, but you know how me, how we are, brothers. Look, look, we gotta talk about it if it's got some big money in it. Look, Anthony F, what are you talking about here, brother? Believe in Christ Jesus. Absolutely. Husband, father, bang, yes. Bang, yes. Anthony F. Stick around, brother. You hear a Noah story. Boom. Soon enough. <laughs> look, look. Hurricane Master. Bye. Love your brother. See you, brother. Bye. <laughs> what do we got? Wrong hand, you son of a bitch. Bye. Look, look. Bye. Yeah. Oh. Look at. Hold on. <laughs> that breeded. All right. We're going to make it quick, though. That breeded. Michelle, my son. The fruit of my womb. What are you doing downstairs? Mama. <laughs> Iota has recruited the man who invented TCPIP woman. I would not be down here on the internet if it wasn't for this man. <laughs> That's true. Van Brini wouldn't even be down there if it wasn't for this motherfucker creating TCPIP. Bye. Look. Mama. Deutsche Bank has joined the J.P. Morgan Blockchain Network. I.I.S. woman. Look, look. And look, woman. Oh. Fat F compliance is real. All the exchanges are becoming compliant now. The money will be safe soon, mama. Look, mama, you asked me what am I doing downstairs. Mama, I am investing in the cryptocurrency. Now, leave me, woman. Bye. <laughs> Van Breenen! Bang! All right. Just a quickie on the Van Breenen tonight. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Wait, wait. Let me give him the proper. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang! Yes. All right. What we got? TRX. Well, that just means Tron right there. Tron, lover. Tron, number one D app. Mine, win, and earn divs daily. Yes. So I heard. So I've heard. TRX. Bang! Yes. Dead Axe. Bang, see you, brother. Charlie Choi, bravo, my life. <laughs> All right, brother. Bang, Ooh, bravo, your life. Love it, love it. What we got, what we got? Oh, look at Spy Lady. Spy Lady, <laughs> Renzi. Bang, see you, girl. Love you, girl. Bang. What we got? Wayne, one, two, three. Bang, see you, brother. The darkness has arrived. What's the darkness talking about? Oh, that's why he arrived. Because I put this out here. Yes. See, that's when the darkness comes out. <laughs> when you've got some dark shit to talk about. Oil soars after the attack on the Saudi facilities. Oh, we didn't even talk about it. There's nothing to talk about. Saudis are fucked. Saudis are fucked. It's not going to affect global oil supplies. Because we have. there's a lot more oil. But Saudis, now that the Houthis know how to attack you. Remember this? Saudi Arabia, they produce two things. Camels and oil. Yeah, well, the major one of it is oil. If those Houthis now know how to just destroy your, your oil, yeesh, all you got left is camels. <laughs> Bye, look, look, and then uh, China numbers. All right, let's go down. We got Master Barber. Oh, bye, Master Barber. Love your brother. See your brother. He said he's from uh, New Orleans, uh, Louisiana. Bang, all right. Ryan. 
Bang. See you guys. Samara Bob. See you, brother. Bang. Moon landing. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang. Yes. All right, medium. Fuck it. Since you're down here. Bang. <laughs> yes. Medium snuck in down there, too. Look, look. Got an extra bang. Look. Who we got here? New subscriber. Moby Pay. Bang. See you. Was a geek. A limitless public blockchain platform secured by our proof of honesty protocol. Oh, wasn't that great? Built from the ground up. Join us. Bang. All right, buddy. Hmm. You making money with that thing or what? <laughs> Talk to me then. Look. Yes. Oh, son of a bitch. Bye. Look, look. Bye. Look, look. Bye. Yes. You already got bangs up there, but he had to get his look, look bangs down here. Love you, brother. You know that. Poppy Wood. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Sweet eight. Yes. Love you, girl. Hard working girl, too. Hard working girl. Love you, girl. See you, girl. Bye. Yes. Yes. All right. Phil G, what are we talking about? Crypto enthusiast? No, oh, Tron ETN. And then some sort of. Oh, that looks like some. I don't even know what the fuck that. Anyways, look. Bye. Look. Yes. All right. All right. We got more. Real Estate Investing International. Bye. See you, brother. Oh, and look at the Tron wallet followed me. That's funny. A fully decentralized PTW crypto. Because Poppy sent me something <laughs> so tron wallet was like yes yes bang and then they followed not that they're really gonna listen or anything but look whatever oh and there's tron wallet they said yes 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 because poppy would send me and then he sent me back all right charles troy bravo oh we did you already yes. well since you retweeted though that's a retweet so bang you get a second portion of bang and then last one come on that's one more Bam, what are you talking about? Justin, Harbor has created tokens on the Ethereum blockchain representing the shares of four real estate funds worth $100 million. Now, you see what's amazing about that? They are going to tokenize real estate. And I told you guys about that. Like, uh, for the, um, in, in, I told you about like India and shit. People just get their land stolen from them. Yep. Fucking rich guys come with some gun boys and just will tell you and your family, get the fuck off the land. And then they bribe, uh, they'll bribe a local guy to r bullshit, you know, forge documents that you own the land. And so it's going to be good that um, that land is on the blockchain. Um, and so, but also what's good about this story is, where is it on? Ethereum. What did we just read about? Right? JP Morgan's got their thing on Ethereum. These guys are putting their thing on me. Ethereum is rocking and rolling. Rocking and rolling. Um, we've read a few things this year about it, right? And uh, so, yeah, man. And, I, and I've told you this before, my feelings. I think the battle of the blockchain is going to be on these sort of uh, blockchains that you can write distributed apps on. And it's going to be about who gets the biggest names on your distributed app. On who write... Hold on, let me calm down. <laughs> Who's got the biggest names writing distributed apps, deploying distributed apps on their blockchain is what I think the true battle of the blockchain is going to be going forward in life. All right. Look, look. Look at everybody. What's Justin talking about? All right. That's good enough. That's good enough. I don't need to do that. Bang. Look, look. Bang. Look, look. Yeah. Bang. All right. We had a great show for you today. So. Iota recruits that renowned researcher. Like I told you, man, that guy, he, the reason you can see me right now is because of a protocol called TCPIP, Transmission Control Protocol, Internet Protocol. And this guy, he wrote it as part of a team. And he is now part of Iota's team. He's been working on decentralization since 1981, before a lot of these crypto nerds were even born. <laughs> so. That's why I thought it was so great. I don't do those stories where so and so is working for so and so or so and so is working for so. I don't really give a shit about that. But this is different in that he's a renowned, you know, he's the reason we get to see each other, man. Like he's the reason that our computers talk. 
All right? Um, I know, if you're young, you probably don't even, well, what are you talking about? But when I was a kid, when the inter- well, well, first of all, there wasn't an internet. When I first started using computers, I had to use a thing called a modem and call in to the server that I wanted the information from. <laughs> like I said, I had to do a long-distance call to Australia if I wanted something off of the Australian, you know, some Australian website. You know, uh, that's what you, if you know about phone freaking, we used to phone freak. So we used to steal, I'll just say it right now, it's not that you can bust me. We used to learn about SS4, SS5 systems. Those are your signal switching systems. That's what your phone company runs on. And we used to learn those systems and steal the long distance. We used to steal long distance service from them because that's how you had to use it. There wasn't just some, you know, Wi-Fi in your house <laughs> at all like that. You had to just plug your phone into your phone, your, your computer into your phone jack and call the server you wanted. And so that's what this guy did. He changed it from that to, yeah, well, now you just have what, what, what when I was a kid, it was called an ISP, an internet service provider. So we used to have ISPs like America Online. And uh, <laughs> is America Online still here? And... Uh, I don't even remember the other companies. Uh, Net Zero was one of them. But anyway, so that's how important it is. And so, bang, all right, I'm getting all nostalgic about the old internet. It wasn't even called the internet when I was a kid. It was called the Information Superhighway. <laughs> yeah, they just made up that internet shit after 2000. Look, so look, next story. Holy, sorry, guys. Deutsche Bank joins JP Morgan Crypto Blockchain now. Amazing that Deutsche Bank joined. But what's more amazing is, <laughs> because you know me, brothers. I mean, I would have talked to you. I had no idea that J.P. Morgan was signing up bank after bank after bank to their IIS thing. 300 and something banks? Daggone, daggone. And that's what I was telling you guys. Oh, little ripple lovers. That's what I was telling the little ripple lovers. Remember when we first heard about the J.P. Morgan coin? I was like, you can go fuck all your little XRP thing. That's not going to work. Everyone's signing up. <laughs> you know, They're going to sign up for the J.P. Morgan coin thing. No problem. That's J.P. Morgan, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't worry about that. Now, little ripple lovers. You you guys give it a stop with that bullshit. So look, though, and that's why I brought up this because, damn, I didn't know they were so far along in the process. You know, like, yeah, yeah that's the way to say it. I did not know they were onboarding and onboarding yet. Um. So, I mean, what does that have to do with our money, Shamari? Nothing. But it just, um, well, unless you're a Ripple lover, again, you might want to restructure that portfolio. <laughs> right? Use your brain. All right. And then finally, OKX Korea delists five cryptos because of FATF. And that's the thing, guys. FATF, man, worldwide, baby. Over 200 countries are becoming compliant. I told you, even the fucking Iranians, and they're sanctioned. They're like, yeah, we're becoming FATF compliant. And the Russians even, like, everybody is. And so, and so I brought it up just because, I mean, well, I brought it up for you as a subscriber of mine. I want you to be aware that FATF might not be, um, well, hold on, let me put it a different way. Countries might not be, how do I say this? Countries might be, might not be so cool. All right, let's just say it like a moron. They might not be so cool with those ones that were in the article, with those cryptos that were in that article, okay? And that goes uh, and amongst the 200 countries. So I want you to just think about that if you're a hodler of any of that stuff. Monero, Zcash. Anyway, there was a, bu a couple of them, right? A bunch of them. Well, five, it says, right? So five of them. So think about that. And then also... But just understand, I want you to also understand the power of FATF. And I want you to look at it in another way in that, okay, we talked about a delistings or five delistings, fine. But I want you to look at it another way in that once FATF compliance comes around to all these countries, which are supposed to be implemented, I think it's right Q1 next year, I believe, these countries are supposed to be FATF compliant. So I'm hoping it'll be easier to get crypto ETFs and futures and stuff like that because they'll be like, well, we're FATF compliant. 
Do you know what I'm saying? All right. We'll see. We'll see. And that's a bunch of hopium right there. But look, that's how it goes. All right. Let's chill it and kill. Let's get you back to your wife's lives. Look, my name is... Uh, what are you talking about? Bang, subscribe below, press the bell. And you get automatic notifications when I do this show. I love talking money, love talking crypto. My name is Shamar Clark. This is the favorite time of my day. So thank you for having me in your home. And uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, that's it. So, bang, my name is Shamar Clark. I'm always on duty. Yeah. Over and out.